All right, so let's start our lesson for this morning. As you can see, our topic is Woods Rogers and Crown Colony Government. So let's get to it. Good morning, everyone. Today's lesson is going to be interactive. So get prepared to participate. The tools that will be needed are either two to three photo sheets, a pen and a pencil, along with the device that you are using to access the internet. One tool that may be beneficial to you would be the textbook, The Making of the Bahamas, pages 49 to 53. And just a reminder for everyone, this class is being recorded. All right, our objectives for today are to define terms related to Crown Colony government, list three facts about the early life and experiences of Woods Rogers, and to examine three reasons for the introduction of Crown Colony government. So before we begin, let's do a quick review of last class. Crown Colony government was introduced in 1718 when Royal Governor Woods Rogers arrived in the Bahamas. It is stated that Crown Colony government was needed because one, supplies were not sent fast enough. You do not need to write this as yet. When it is time to write, I will let you know. Number one, supplies were not sent fast enough. Number two, Taxes were not collected. Number three, the port was in disrepair. Number four, governors were corrupt and inefficient. And number five, pirates ruled the islands. So our vocabulary for today are Crown Colony government, pirate, privateer, circumnavigate, and royal Pardon, our topic is Woods Rogers and Crown Colony Government. So what is or what was a Crown Colony Government? Crown Colony Government is a system in which a person is appointed by a monarch to act as his or her representative in a colony. What is a pirate? A pirate is a person who illegally attacks and robs ships at sea for profit. What was a privateer? Privateer was a sailor that was given a license to attack an enemy ship that his or her country was at war with. And what does it mean to circumnavigate? This means to sail or travel all the way around the world. A pirate was a person who robbed ships for their own profit. A royal pardon. A royal pardon was an official order given by a king or queen to stop the punishment of a person accused of a crime. All right, so let's discuss whether or not those reasons actually were why Crown Colony government was needed. I need you guys to take a deep breath, relax, give yourself a good stretch because we're going to work our brains. Okay, so were these things really that bad? Tell me what you think. On a sheet of paper, I want you to choose three of the reasons for the introduction of Crown Colony government and explain why you think they were viewed as negative. You have five minutes to do this assignment. Yes, please write them down. Remember I said this is a 
thinking exercise. So there isn't necessarily a right or wrong answer. I want you to tell me why you think that these things on the list would have been seen as negative. Why would it be a bad thing for supplies not to come fast enough? Are the collection of taxes really that bad? If a port is in disrepair, that means it is broken and ships cannot land. Is that a bad thing? If so, why? Governors were corrupt and inefficient. That means their leaders were working along with pirates and people committing crimes. They were not doing their jobs appropriately. Would that be bad? Why? And number five, pirates ruled the islands. How would that negatively impact the government, the settlers, the island itself, its environment? All right, time is up. Now, here's where you get interactive. You interact with me. In the chat box, I need you to type one of your choices and your view on why Crown Colony government was chosen. I'll give you two minutes. All right, I'm seeing your responses. They're all looking really great. You guys are so smart. Someone said, if pirates ruled the islands, they may have been stealing from people and stealing a lot. And if nobody was stopping them, they may have been bleeding them dry. That's a very good response. Governments were corrupt and working with pirates. That meant the pirates can rob and attack ships and not get caught and possibly kill someone and get away with it. These are some really good responses, guys. All right, we have 16 seconds left. If pirates ruled, the citizens would have no money. Good job. All right, we're moving on. So, Woods Rogers, he is the main focus of this lesson. So, I'm going to briefly tell you a little about him. So, who was Woods Rogers? Who was this guy? And why was he so important? Woods Rogers was born in Dorset, England in 1659, and he died in the Bahamas in the year 1732. That, that means he died at about the age of 53. He was a sailor and a former soldier. He was later able to obtain permission to become a privateer. Who remembers what a privateer was? A privateer was a sailor that was licensed to attack an enemy ship of his country at war. He was able to accomplish one really great feat. He was able to capture two Spanish ships making him the first Englishman in 120 years to capture these types of vessels. This guy was famous. He had been able to circumnavigate the globe. That means he was able to sail around the world and he traveled to many different areas of the world, such as the Pacific Ocean. In a later slide, we'll get to see some of his areas a little closer. 
He went as far east as the Philippines and as far west as Ecuador. He traveled to Ecuador by passing around Cape Horn, which is at the tip of the continent of South America. As a captain and former commander, Rogers was able to display not only his nautical skills, that means his skills on the ocean, but also his ability to be firm but fair with his crew. This behavior led to him gaining the respect of his crews and spreading fear to his enemies. So I have a question. I want you guys to start thinking about who was Rogers was and what he may have been capable of. All right, now, this is something that's going to lead to an activity. So I need you guys to get ready on the map. Label the following areas which Rogers may have stumbled upon during his trip around the world. You see here, he would have started in Bristol, England. And he would have traveled around the continent of Africa, passing the Cape of Good Hope. He would then travel through the Indian Ocean and eventually at lending ending up in the Philippines. The Philippines is similar to the Bahamas. It is an archipelago. At some point, he also traveled west around Cape Horn and he landed in Ecuador where he was able to, as they say, sack an entire city and hold them for ransom. The only reason he did not claim the ransom is because the city had been plagued with yellow fever. If you want to find out what the symptoms of yellow fever are, you can Google it later. Now I need you to pay attention to these areas. He went to Bristol, England, which is a part of Europe. He went around the Cape of Good Hope, which is close to Africa. He went to the Philippines, which is in the Pacific Ocean, around Cape Horn. That means he went around South America and he landed in Ecuador. So we're going to play a game, guys. Give me one moment. All right, I need you to go to this link and play the game or you can follow my instructions. We're gonna go on purpose games and I want you to type in the search box, propose areas of Woods Rogers and you will find this game. The game will take you three minutes. You will be timed and it will show you who comes first. So let's get to it. You guys have three minutes. I will give you four minutes in order to have time to access the game. Nathaniel Neely, congratulations. You're the first to finish. Good job.
Okay, people, you have two minutes and 15 seconds left. Two minutes and 15 seconds left. No need to go to another game when you're done. I'm just giving everybody an opportunity to complete the game. All right, one minute left. All right, time is up. Can everyone see the PowerPoint again? Type yes if you can. All righty. So let's do a poll. I want you guys to vote on whether you think that Woods Rogers was the right man for the job. All right, some people are still seeing purpose games. One moment. All right, did you receive the poll? All right, this should only take about a minute. All right, I'm seeing a lot of yeses. Plenty, plenty yeses. And a no. Oh, wow. I'd love to know why you said no. All right, time is up. Now remember, take it slow. I hope I'm not going too fast for you guys and keep it simple. That means try not to stress about these things. If you don't get the notes as they're on the slide, remember that these lessons will be posted, all right? So just take your time. All right, so some quick facts about the journey that Woods Rogers would have had to go through. All right, England, right here, is 6,998 kilometers or 4,349 miles away from us right over here. 
So that means it takes about six to eight weeks by ship to get from England to the Bahamas. I don't know about you, but I feel like, wow, that's a long time to be sitting on a boat cooped up with a bunch of people, some of whom are strangers. Now, I want you to think about this in real terms. I want you to put yourself in the shoes of Woods Rogers, okay? Now, he had to travel from here on his ship to the Bahamas, a place he most likely had never been to. And he was coming with a crew of a hundred people, some of whom were soldiers and others were regular civilians, settlers who were coming to help to make the colony stronger and better. All right, so I want you to think, how did they feel knowing that they were leaving their families for this long voyage? What sort of conditions were they going to be exposed to based on weather? Do you guys know the difference between the climate here and the climate in England? How cold is it? How hot? How windy is it usually? I don't know if any of you have ever traveled by boat, but sometimes those waves really do rock and you could feel it in the pit of your stomach. You could get sick. They call that seasickness. Yes, Ms. Thompson, the Bahamas is hotter than England on most days. So what happened when Mr. Rogers arrived in the Bahamas? All right. As stated before, Woods Rogers arrived in 1718. He came with three ships. His lead ship was called the Delicia. That is D-E-L-I-C-I-A. All right. As I stated before, his 100 person crew was made up of soldiers and settlers. But most of all, if there's nothing else you remember about this lesson is Mr. Rogers came with royal pardons. If you don't remember what a royal pardon was, it was an official order given by a king or queen to stop the punishment of a person accused of a crime. So he brought with him royal pardons for all of the pirates who had chosen to remain in the colony and who had decided that they would no longer engage in piracy. That means all, their entire record would be scrubbed clean. They would be seen as regular civilians, they'd be able to go back to living a normal life if they chose to take the pardon. All right, now, this is some time for you guys to write notes if you wish. If you have a cell phone and you can take a picture of it, you can do that. If you want a screenshot, you can screenshot as well. All right, guys, I'll give you three minutes. And then we have to move on. Remember what I said, don't worry about not getting all of it down. This will be posted. All right, we're gonna go on Kahoot. So I need you guys to go on kahoot.it and then you will press play. All right, we're gonna go on Kahoot. So I need you guys 
to go on kahoot.it and then you will press play. Go on Kahoot.it and type in the game pin. It is 6976691. Yes, you can do it on your phone. Make sure I look at the... All right. Who was on the top? Maya Bright. Davis, you're in a close second. Well, this one was easy. Eh? These answers come in quick. All right, 26 got it correct. 18, try again next time. Maya, Maya, you fall off the board. Good going, Tim. Ace Gamer and Crispy Cream. All right, thank you. 
maintaining your lead. Maya, look like you trying to get back in this game. All right. Boy, you guys gotta go study. Oh, wait. Oh, that's my bad. I'm sorry. For those who picked Diamond, you were correct. Go to Europe. Ten seconds, ten seconds. Dale, it looks like you had a high jump. Look at you. It's a tricky one. Dale, you're holding your lead, ace game. I see you coming back up, though. Congratulations, you have come back from the bottom. Dale, take the lead again. This one might be tricky. Let's see what you remember. All right, who is at the top? Number three, Empress. Number two, Tiara. And our champion is Dale. Congratulations.
All right, real quick in the chat, I just need you to tell me one thing that you learned today. One thing that you learned today. I want to see who has been paying attention. Oh, Kevin, no. I like that. I like your response. All right, guys. Your homework is very simple. I need you to look up definitions of the vocabulary words. For those of you who like games like Assassin's Creed, you can check out this video, Assassin's Creed, The Real History, Woods Rogers. For those that like to get straight to the point, you can go to YouTube and type in Privateers, Captain Woods Rogers, and they will give you a good sum up of who Woods Rogers was. And finally, for those who may have missed notes or would like to see this video again, you can find all these resources on the Ministry of Education virtual learning site. Now, this lesson won't necessarily be up today, but give it some time and check back over the next couple of days. That is the end of our lesson. So it was nice. You guys have a good day. It is very close to lunchtime. So I hope everyone has a nice, healthy lunch and enjoy your weekend and your other classes. Boys and girls, our story today is Jack and the Beanstalk. There was once a poor widow. Her son Jack was a lazy boy. So they had very little money. One sad day, things got so bad that the widow decided to sell the only thing they had left. She sent Jack off to the market with Milky White, their cow telling him to get the best price he could. Jack was only part way along the road when he bumped into a funny old man. The old man eyed the cow and said, my boy, I'll swap her for something very precious. He pulled out five beans out of his pocket. Beans, Jack said. They're magic ones, the old man said. That made Jack mind up. He handed over Milky White and went home very satisfied with his bargain. Mom, look what I've got, he shouted. Jack's mother wasn't so happy. She threw the beans out of the window and a saucepan at Jack. Then she sent him to bed without any supper. In the morning, however, Jack could hardly believe his eyes. Something was crawling outside his bedroom window. He poked his head out. It wasn't a tree or a giant sunflower, but a bean stalk that grew straight up into the sky. At once, Jack jumped out of his window and began to climb the bean stalk. Half an hour later, he found himself in a city where everything was much larger. Across the field was a very big house. A woman answered the door. What about a bite to eat? Jack asked. All right, the woman said. But if my husband the giant comes, you will have to make yourself scarce. He eats children. Jack decided to take a chance, but he hardly sat down. When the, at the table, when there was a roar outside. Fee, five, four. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Quick, 
in the oven. The woman said to Jack, Nonsense, sweetheart. You smell the scrap of yesterday's child. I give the cat, she told her husband. After the meal, the giant began counting bags of gold that soon put him to sleep. And out jumped Jack and he stole a bag. He threw it down the beanstalk and stumbled after. His mother couldn't hardly believe her good luck. But a few months later, all the gold was spent. Jack decided to go back to the land again. Up the beanstalk he climbed. This time, however, the giant wife was suspicious. Last time you came, a bag of gold went missing, she said, and the fuss that caused. All the same, she still let Jack in. Very soon, the giant came along. Fee, five, four, thumb, he started to roar. Jack hid in the oven again. Nonsense, angel, the giant's wife said. It's only the smell of that baby broth you had yesterday. Eat your buffalo pie. After he began to eat, the ogre shouted, Wife, bring me my hand. His wife bought it. Lay, the giant commanded. And to Jack amazement, the hen laid a golden egg. And naturally, Jack stole the hen also. By now, Jack and his mother were well off. But after a year, Jack decided to try his luck again. Up he climbed. This time, he sneaked his way past the giant's wife and hid in her copper pan. In came the giant. Fee, five, four, four, he started. If it's that thrifty boy again, he'll be in the oven. Dearest, his wife said, but of course Jack wasn't. I know he is here somewhere, the giant rumbled, but although they searched high and low, they couldn't find Jack. This time after the meal, the giant got out a golden harp. Sing, he commanded, and the harp lullaby him to sleep. Now Jack wanted that half more than anything he had ever seen before. He climbed into the snoring giant's knee, jumped onto the table, and he grabbed it. Master! The harp cried. Jack jumped off the table. The giant galloped after them. Master! The harp cried again. When Jack was halfway down the beanstalk, the giant began to climb after him. Mom! Jack called. Mom! Together they chopped the beanstalk and down it trembled, giant and all. He died instantly. Poof! Jack said, that was a close one. After that, Jack and his mother lived rich people lives. The hen laid golden eggs whenever they told it to. People paid to hear the golden harp play. It's even said that Jack married a beautiful princess. Maybe he did.